All right, in this video, we will talk about ORB in OpenCV using Python. So we will start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we could get these features here on the right. So what is ORB? The idea is, or first off, it stands for Oriented, Fast, and Rotated Brief. So you can see it combines both the fast and brief uh, concepts that we talked about previously, um, but the idea is it's supposed to be much faster and it's a feature detection method to get around SIFT. So why do we need ORB? It's a feature detection, it's efficient and low memory, and like we were saying, it's uh, for license restriction issues that was um, placed on SIFT and SURF a while back. Okay, so why does how does ORB work? So first part is the fast detector, right? So we talked about the fast detector previously, uh, but the idea is you first run the fast detector to get a rough selection of features. And then you want to narrow down to n key points by using Harris corners. And after that, you apply a scale pyramid to account for scale um, in steps A and B, okay? And then you have orientation by intensity centroid, so you want to compute the moments of your uh, area that you're looking at and find the centroid and angle of that area. So um, the moment here is defined by the product of x, y, and your intensity values over the x and y directions. And the centroid is just the ratios of the different uh, moments that we calculated. And the angle is just a tan 2 of the moments um, that are in the 0 and 1, 0 components. OK, so rotation of brief. The idea, you have uh, use, use brief to obtain the feature descriptor. And what you want to do is steer brief to the correct orientation at 12 degree increments using a lookup table. And you'll run a greedy algorithm to find unique features by finding features with high variance and mean close to uh, 0.5. So you will have uh, x and y values that will describe the feature. And you're going to keep rotating it until it matches with um, where it's supposed to end up. And the actual matching parts will use what's called the LSH, locality sensitive hashing, to approximate nearest neighbor search. So with this part, you want to bucket things together with a high probability and same for the, the similar ones. And then after that, you will use what's called a hammy dis hamming distance to compare the distance between the two descriptors. And it's just a specific way of comparing distance for binary descriptors. And we'll have a video on matching later on to go into more details, but that's the general idea. So let's jump right into a coding example. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and import our modules that we'll need. We have import cv2 as cv, and then import numpy as np, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import os. So we're going to call our function orb here, and we have our if name equals main. And we're going to call our orb function. So inside of here, we're going to do root equals os.getcwd. And then our path, os.path.join. And pass in root demo images, tesla.jpg. We're going to get our grayscale image here. So cv.amread. And pass in our image path, cv.amread grayscale. Then we have our orb equals cv.orb uh, create. And we have our key points equals orb.detect and pass in our grayscale image and none for the second parameter. And key points equals, um, I'm not going to use a second output, orb.compute, pass in image gray and key points. Then we have our image gray here equals cv dot draw key points. And we're going to pass in our gray image, our key points, 
our gray image again, and our flags is going to be cv dot uh, draw matches, and we're going to do the rich key points here. Then we'll do plt dot figure plt dot um, I'm gonna show the gray image, and then plt dot show. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see our features. I'm missing an e here. So if I run this again, we should see our features being shown. And you can see it's very fast, right? Because we're using the fast method. Um, but yeah, you can see the features are shown here. And if we zoom into different parts of the trees, you can see some features are showing up. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.